it in Ephraim, it is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, He who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed to Jacob and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied in my bounty. The word. Thanks be to God. Psalm 84. How dear to me you shall dwell in the Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The Sarah sparrow has, has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, the Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward all the saints and for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? The word of the Lord. And Thanks be to God. Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. 
When he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you with, in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be the Lord Christ. chapters of the Gospel of Luke, and you will, like me, be astounded at how many times Luke notices Mary pausing to think about the experiences happening to her. When the angel Gabriel visits her, Mary ponders the kind of greeting the celestial being offers her. Later, when after giving birth to her firstborn son, Mary is visited by shepherds who tell her and Joseph about their supernal experience, and she treasures and ponders their testimony. In a month, we will celebrate the Feast of Candlemas, or the Feast of the Presentation of Jesus at the Temple, and the Gospel lection set for that day includes a proclamation from Simeon of the special divine role that this baby will play, which amazes both Mary and Joseph. And then Simeon turns directly to Mary and says these portentous words. This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed at the, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. And then chapter 2 closes our story of young Jesus uh, now 12 years old, spending three days at the temple while his parents frantically look for him. Our translation doesn't quite get the Greek's meaning. It's less about being in his father's house, and more Jesus telling Mary, don't you know that I must be about my father's business or my father's affairs? As the reunited family returns to their God of Galilean town of Nazareth, this is yet one more instance of Mary being shown that her firstborn is someone specially tapped by God, and that Jesus is himself become, becoming aware of his vocation, that on the year before he would cross the threshold into adulthood, what later becomes known in rabbinic Judaism as a bar mitzvah, he senses God's spirit in him. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. Let's keep Mary company for a bit, shall we? We know that God's spirit speaks through her as the Magnificat shows us, that when she uses her voice, it is profoundly prophetic. It is a rare thing for me not to get choked up when I recite these lines of poetry and psalm during Advent 3. And so it is all the more striking to me that it is Mary's silence 
that also speaks volumes about how God dwells in her. And I wonder if this choice to ponder and sit in silence might be a model for you and me. Let me offer this analogy in the world of medicine. When the nurse takes your or my blood pressure, there are two numbers that are measured. Anyone know it? Systolic and systolic. The systolic and diastolic readings. Thank you. The systolic reading measures the blood pressure when your heart pumps blood out to the rest of your body, while the diastolic reading measures blood pressure when the heart is at rest and fills with oxygen and blood. We might think of the life of faith in a related way. There are moments when spirituality takes on systolic dimensions. The proclamation and prophecy that announces God's arrival in the world, the miraculous actions done by prophets and sages and other of God's messengers, the multitude of the heavenly host appearing in the night sky in the early morning hours of Jesus' birth, Mary's song, Simeon's prayer, uh, even our own collective or individual recitation of the Nicene or Apostles' Creed. The Christian life sometimes asks you and me to bear visible witness to our faith, an insignia of our commitment to the one we follow as Lord and Savior. But Mary teaches you and me that the life of faith also requires and invites us into more reflective times, like a heart at diastolic rest. It is in these moments of silence, of contemplation, but the kind of pondering and treasuring that Mary does, that you and I can take in all that God, the world, the great amazing things and the terrible awful things that make up our individual and collective lives, take in all of this and try to discern how God's spirit is moving through and filling our hearts amidst the hustle and the bustle the ups and the downs, the messiness and chaos and excitements of life. You and I know that we're supposed to engage in reflection during Advent to prepare our hearts so we can have room for Christ to be born, but all too often we are too caught up preparing for the other elements of the holiday season like gift buying or food prepping or travel takes or road rage. Some of us are caught in a tangle of trauma and grief over loved ones who are no longer here to celebrate with, or maybe the holiday season reminds us of a broken relationship that make this season full of shadow and darkness rather than light and life. And then, just like last week, Christmas Eve comes and goes. Before you know it, you and I are busy making New Year's resolutions, getting ready for the seasons of Epiphany and Lent, getting 2022 underway, Before any of this happens, let's not let this short season of Christmas pass us by without following the example of our mother Mary as she reminds us of an essential act of discipleship, reflection. Because none of what God is ever up to should be easy to get or at once understood. Christmas is not yet over. And so while we still live in Christmas time, let us, you and I, right now, engage in some merry pondering and treasure. May the rest of this sermon be permission to think through your own thoughts of what all this means to you. Think all the way back to Advent 1 and reflect on what both Advent and Christmas 2021 meant to you. You don't need to arrive at the church's answer or the Episcopal church's answer or doctrinal or dogmatic or creedal answer. Simply invite you to contemplate, to think, to wonder, to ponder so that Christmas lingers a little longer. We will right now take a few minutes of silence for this time to contemplate and reflect. And if you feel so moved, write down what comes up for you. And if you haven't picked one up, um, 
problem. When you enter the church, there are index cards in the back of the church about to take in. There are pencils in the key wraps in front of you. You can write this to yourself or to God. If you feel so moved, you can later, later place what you've written in the offering plate as a prayer of wonder or supplication or thanksgiving. Let's give ourselves permission this diastolic sacred space in silence. Ponder, treasure, reflect. We'll take, take two minutes. And I invite those of you in Zoom to ponder, treasure, and reflect in your homes. Once more, sisters and brothers, Merry Christmas.
prayer for the people. For all people in their daily life and work. For, for our families, and friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. From Michael, our presiding bishop, John, our bishop, and Jim and Abel, our priests. For all who serve God in the church. For Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, and Vincente, our mayor. For all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that their actions may lead to justice and peace on the earth. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Hear us, Lord. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. For your mercy is great. We give thanks for those in our community celebrating birthdays and anniversaries between January 1st and the 8th. Nancy Engel. Lydia, Arena, Erica, Hollenbeck, Noe Vasquez, Gretchen Quinn, Guadalupe Viegas, Yasmin Paez, Sabrina from England, Esther Lopez, Brian and Harriet Kelly, and Michael and Maureen Crawford. We pray for the people of Boulder County, Colorado, affected by wildfires earlier this week and especially for those who lost homes and business property. We pray for the faithful the courage to call upon our leaders. Sorry, we pray for faithful courage to call upon our leaders to address this and other effects of the climate crisis. We continue to pray for all those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, especially healthcare workers tending to those sickened by the virus, whose variants are causing resurgence of infection and hospitalization. We also pray for the people of Afghanistan who are on the brink of mass starvation this winter, and for our resolve to push our leaders to amend or to attend to this urgent humanitarian crisis. We pray for our homeless brothers and sisters that they may receive shelter, food, health care, and that their dignity may be respected. Give us and our leaders wisdom to develop policies that allow all people to have safe and affordable shelter. From the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Congo. We pray for those in our community who have asked for prayers. Douglas Sheridan, Doug Lord, John Walker, Tyler Hudson, Lopredo Estrada, Eric Corellius, D. Tucker, Linda Barnhart and Jennifer Reynolds. We give thanks for the one in whose honor the altar flowers have been given by Peter Bashar in memory of the late great Doris Tibble. We continue to pray for those named in the ongoing prayer list and for those we hold in our hearts. At this moment, you may offer additional petitions and thanksgiving by the sign of your own. Bible of the Church, Lord Jesus. Holy God, source of all life, drench our parched and flagging spirits with your spirit, that we may be restored to strength and become resilient bearers of your good news and hope for the world. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, God, word, and word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have, we have left undone. undone. We, have we have not loved you from our heart. We, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are, we are truly sorry, sorry when we come to you. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, and that we might learn your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Amen.
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. <laughs> Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Let us therefore greet one another in the name of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thanks, everyone. Yes, brother. Me too. Thanks. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
your words spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh God, we remember his death, we, we proclaim his resurrection, resurrection. we, we await his coming in glory. And we, have, we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable for him and be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. Bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us in the language of our choice, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Look, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Jesus welcomes everyone to this table.
Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body of blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. Now, God, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to learn and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May God the Father, who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world, shed that love upon you, his children. Amen. May Christ the Son, who by his incarnation gathered into one thing, earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer, be with you, those you love, and everyone you encounter this day and always. Amen. Amen. positive for COVID-19 and they are, um, she or her Stephanie herself is symptomatic uh, and is awaiting test results. So please keep her and her family in your prayers. Uh, as a result, I've asked her to stay home this week out of an abundance of caution so that um, she can safely quarantine and take care of herself and her family and also minimize risk in, in the church office. So there may, there will be staff coming in periodically to do various um, tasks, but I ask if you intend to come to the office to call beforehand to make sure that someone is available to receive you. Okay. Um, okay, so obviously the big news, and I have the hard copies of the letter that I wrote to you earlier this week about um, the return to remote services. Um, it is not ideal, I acknowledge that for many, if not all of us, and yet, uh, given what epidemiologists are saying, uh, we are expecting the Omicron wave to hit us around the mid of middle of or towards the end of January. So out of love for you all, we need to ride this wave out as safely and securely as possible. And so for the next four Sundays, at the least, we will be doing remote services via Zoom. If you are not familiar with Zoom, if you're having trouble with Zoom, please reach out to me via my phone number, you can text me or email me, I'd be happy to walk you through um, uh, how to set that up. Um, but we're gonna do so because uh, uh, we love each other, we want all of us to be safe, we wanna be able to see each other 
uh, after this wave is over. Okay. So um, unfortunately, as a result, we're not going to have coffee hour today either. So unfortunately, 2022 is beginning with kind of a limper. Um, <laughs> that said, um, I wish you well. I will miss you all, and I hope to see you in February. Hopefully, um, we will have better numbers in terms of uh, and uh, lower infection rates and the like. Okay. Um, so I'll see you in the back of the church. I will fist, you, fist bump you once more <laughs> and hopefully see you in February and see you online via Zoom. Sure. Have a blessed morning. You too. <laughs>